brothers and sisters in Christ, I'm speaking to you into your very lounge room where your family are gathered, no doubt, to watch your church service live streamed or being video relayed into your home. Of course, we're not able to have church services like we used to, but we can still meet electronically in this way. I've called today, the 29th of March, as a day of prayer for the whole diocese. Prayer is our best weapon against the forces of darkness. And this virus as part of the fallen world is exactly that. God's in control, but this virus is doing a deadly work around the world. We have a God who answers prayer. And I wonder whether you might think of 1900 hours, COVID-19, that's seven o'clock, to particularly pray at seven o'clock tonight. In fact, why don't you pray at seven o'clock every night? A reminder of COVID-19 and a reminder of our dependence upon God. Think about whom you're going to pray for. There'll be lots of people who feel isolated and stranded in the situation. Uh, perhaps take out a pen and pencil now or your tablet and write down some names of people whom you could pray for. And then after you've written their names down, think of contacting them, letting them know you're praying for them and encourage them and support them in whatever way you can. I've been so delighted with the clergy of our diocese, for ministers who are labouring under the stresses of these live streams, but putting their best foot forward so that you can hear the word of God coming into your own lounge room, so that we can encourage you as the saints. Paul writing from prison. Now there's a case in point. He could have been desolate, despairing, but he was upbeat because of the God in whom he put his trust. And he writes to the Colossians and says these words, devote yourselves to prayer, being watchful and thankful. Let us be a prayerful, watchful and thankful diocese, seeking to serve God where we are, seeking to serve the saints who might be so sorely affected by this coronavirus and seeking to serve those in our community who don't know the love of Christ, that we might be watchful for them and pray for them. May God bless you this day and throughout the days of this crisis. The Lord is with us. Thank you and God bless. Hi everyone and welcome to St Luke's Online. For those of you who may not know me, my name is Stuart Pearson and I'm the Senior Minister of St Luke's Church in Liverpool. Well, this is week two of our online service. This week our staff has been busy rising to the new challenges that are set before us. Debbie Kumar, our Church Administrator, she's been working hard on getting us are further prepared to work online as she too will soon be working from home. Stuart Woods, our community chaplain, well, he's continued to offer assistance to people and also to help us out with some of the technical challenges that we're facing at the moment. Es Lau, our associate minister, has been preparing our recording studio that we're using today and getting ready to move our youth ministry and our small group leaders training online. Ed Frost, our children's minister continues to source quality material for our children's ministry and he's been working on an online children's talk that we'll hear in a moment. And I've been seeking to lead this wonderful team of people here at St Luke's and I've also been preparing Bible studies for everybody in second term. This week, I hope that you've been able to reach out to church family members and to your neighbourhood to touch base with people to see how they're going and maybe even pray for them. This week was to be the launch of the Moore College Mission in the Georges River region of the Sydney Anglican Church. This was going to be a week of more focused effort to share the good news of Jesus Christ across the different programs and opportunities in our churches. To launch this week, Ben Purdy, a student from Moore Theological College, was committed to preaching at St Luke's to launch this mission at St Luke's. Now, given that we're still a church that is committed to seeing the lost saved by Christ, 
I thought that we still needed to hear God's word about this challenge. While many businesses will be closing down and many people are now settling into life in their homes, Jesus' great commission to go and make disciples of all nations is still in play. Before we meet Ben, uh, can I lead us in a prayer? Please pray with me. Eternal God and Heavenly Father, by whose power we are created and by whose love we are redeemed, guide and strengthen us by your Spirit so that we may give ourselves to your service and live this day in love for one another and for you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Good morning, St. Luke's. My name is Ben, and it's so great to be with you here this morning. Thanks so much for this opportunity to open up God's Word. You guys have written me some questions on Facebook, so let's have a look at the first one. What was your first paid job? Well, my first paid job was refereeing basketball. Second question, what is your favourite holiday destination? Well, those destinations are a bit limited at the moment, but my favourite destination in normally is Uluru. I love the desert and I love going to the outback of Australia. Number three, what are you all wearing in this photo? Well, that's a basketball team that we had at Moore College and we got custom singlets made. We rocked up to, uh, to Sydney Uni to this competition thinking there was going to be like uh, all professional players and they were all people that had literally played basketball once or twice before. Number four, if you could be a kitchen utensil, what would you be and why? That's a tough one, but I'm gonna go with a pair of tongs just because I think a pair of tongs is super useful and can cover any purpose. Number five, would you rather have edible spaghetti hair or sweet maple syrup sweat? I think I'd go with the maple syrup sweat. Number six, what is your favorite food? This is a really, really tough one, but I'm going to go with butter chicken from an Indian restaurant where I used to live in Penrith. Number seven, what's happening in this photo? Well, that was such a great moment. That was 2013, the end of the year, when I proposed to my beautiful now wife, Bronwyn, and we got married on the 29th of March in 2014. Glad I remembered that one. Number eight, introduce us to the newest member of your family. Well, this is baby Nathaniel, and he is today, this Sunday, 12 weeks old, and we're absolutely loving being parents uh, and loving having our little baby Nathaniel around the house. G'day, I'm Stu Woods, St Luke's Community Chaplain. You'd normally find me at the 10.30 service, but today I'll be reading the Bible to you. Before we start, let me just pray. Heavenly Father, please help us to understand your word as we hear it just now. And we ask this in Jesus' great name. Amen. The passage is from Romans chapter 10, verses 1 to 18. Brothers and sisters, my heart's desire and prayer to God for the Israelites is that they may be saved. For I can testify about them that they are zealous for God, but their zeal is not based on knowledge, since they did not know the righteousness of God and sought to establish their own. They did not submit to God's righteousness. Christ is the culmination of the law so that there may be righteousness for everyone who believes. Moses writes this about the righteousness that is by the law. The person who does these things will live by them. But the righteousness that is by faith says, Do not say in your heart, Who will ascend into heaven? That is, to bring Christ down. Or, Who will descend into the deep? That is, to bring Christ up from the dead. But what it does say, The word is near you. It is in your mouth and in your heart. That is, the message concerning faith that we proclaim. 
if you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified. And it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. As scripture says, anyone who believes in him will never be put to shame. For there is no difference between Jew and Gentile. The same Lord is Lord of all and richly blesses all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. How, then, can they call on the one they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one of whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? And how can anyone preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. But not all the Israelites accepted the good news. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed our message? Consequently, faith comes from hearing the message, and the message is heard through the word about Christ. But I ask, did they not hear? Of course they did. Their voice has gone out into all the earth, their words to the ends of the world. Hi everyone, it's Ed, Children's Minister. Ben uh, will be up shortly to speak to the adults. I usually don't get up and say much at church, but we thought it would be, might be good to have something for the kids as we all meet together online. It's quite strange not being able to meet together. And you know what? We should feel that way. God always wanted us to keep meeting together. He's given us to each other for a reason, to keep encouraging and helping one another trust him. I think not meeting together can remind us that our church building was never the church. It's a fancy building with nice windows and a great big organ that I still haven't heard yet, by the way. We're not in God's family by coming to a building. Romans chapter 10 in the Bible, in verses 2 and 3, talks about Israel. And it says, I know they love God, but they don't understand what makes people acceptable to him. So they refuse to trust God, and they try to be acceptable by obeying the law. They love God, but they don't understand. So they refuse to trust God, and they try to be acceptable or in his family by obeying the law, the rules. It doesn't work that way, though. We can only be in God's family one way. Let's look together in verses 9 and 10. So you will be saved if you honestly say, Jesus is Lord, and if you believe with all your heart that God raised him from death. God will accept you and save you if you truly believe this and tell others. So did you get that? To be in God's family, we must say, Jesus is Lord, my Lord, my boss, my King, and believe that he died and God raised him to life again. Now, has anyone ever told you that you have pretty nice feet? Not me. It's not a usual comment when you greet someone. Hello, how are you today? That's a nice shirt. Have you been reading anything good lately? Whoa, nice feet. It just doesn't happen, does it? Put up your hand if anyone said you have beautiful feet. I'm sure some of you are putting up your hand uh, right about, about now. I, I just can't see. If you've seen my feet, though, you might understand why no one said it to me with my gnarly toes and broken nails. Yours are probably lovely, but we can all have beautiful feet no matter what they look like. And it has to do with verse 10. God will accept you 
and save you if you truly believe this, that is, Jesus is Lord, and tell it to others. So we believe this about Jesus and tell others. Verse 14, how can people have faith in the Lord and ask him to save them if they have never heard about him? They can't. And how can they hear unless someone tells them? They can't. The Bible says the one who speaks the good news about Jesus has very beautiful feet. And that's what we encourage you to do, to tell other people the good news about Jesus. Even when you are stuck at home, to let other people know uh, that they can have the good news about Jesus as well. Now, what I want you guys to do is to take a piece of paper and trace around your foot. Here's one that I prepared earlier. Okay, it's not my foot. But trace around your foot, and then you're going to write the verse, how beautiful are the feet of those that preach good news. You'll find it in your Bible at home in Romans chapter 10, verse 15. And then, after you have used your magic texts and pencils, just like me, voila! You have something that looks very beautiful like that. Now, what we'd like you to do is to see if you can get mum and dad to take a photo of that and then to post it into the Facebook group. So say that again. Mum and dad, if you're happy, take a photo of the picture and post it in the Facebook group for us to see. We'd really like to see that from you. Thanks, everyone, and enjoy. Well, what strange times that we're living in. In the course of four months, our world and our country have completely changed. You don't need me to tell you because it's on every headline, on every channel on the TV, and in every conversation. On Tuesday morning, I ducked out of the house to get some fresh air and to go for a walk down to the local cafe social distancing protocol, of course, and it was absolutely deserted. There was no one around, and there's one person in the cafe making coffee. And so we started chatting, and of course, the content of our conversation, the coronavirus. I asked him how he was going, and the conversation quickly focused on all the bad, all the negative things that are happening in this world. The reality is we're living in a pretty tough time. Things are pretty negative at the moment. Our world is full of uncertainty and worry. I've certainly felt that in my own house. It's easy to feel defeated because we're feeling the brokenness of our world and we're reminded of how life is so, so fragile. But St. Luke's, we have this incredibly good news. We have such an opportunity to speak this good news of Jesus to people. The deep-rooted joy of Jesus the faithfulness of Jesus, the hope of Jesus now and forever after life. Did you know that statistically, it's during times of crisis that people are open to talking about Jesus and coming to faith? We have this good news that everyone in our country and our world needs. Our passage in Romans chapter 10 unpacks why Jesus is so good news. And here at St. Luke's, we need to be reminded about this good news in the time of difficulty. We need to be refreshed by the good news of Jesus and encouraged, spurred on that this good news is what our world so badly needs. Romans chapter 10 says to us, don't look to yourself, look to God and look out to the world. So don't look to yourself. Have a look at Romans 10 verse 5. Moses writes this about the righteousness that is by law. The person who does these things will live by them. And so Paul tells us right up what we're talking about here, righteousness. That is, how can we have peace with God? How can we have a relationship with him? A good standing before God. And notice how Paul talks about the Moses and the Old Testament law before Jesus. Well, people took this law and they thought, if I can follow it, then I'm going to measure up to God. They thought that they could do all the heavy lifting and be saved. You see, Israel in the Old Testament, they looked completely to themselves. They tried to make their own way to be right with God, but they couldn't do it. 
Have you ever had one of those days where you thought, I'm not going to do anything wrong today. I'm going to be nice to everyone, polite and patient. And then as you wake up, you walk out of your room and someone's left a piece of Lego on the floor that you step on. You jump in the car and you drive through the first roundabout and someone cuts you off. We can't do it. Israel couldn't follow the law. They couldn't make a way to God. As you know, they needed God's way. And really today, we need to ask the same question about righteousness. When it comes to God, the one that created the universe, how do you go on a scale of 1 to 10? What does God think when he looks at you? And it's that question that we always ask. If you stood before God and he said, why should I let you into heaven? What would you say? I grew up thinking that if I could just measure up, then God will accept me. Have you ever thought that way? And even as people who follow Jesus, we can slip into that trap. We can do that same sin again, that sin that we've moved on from, and we can say, ah, I've failed again. And we can either think, God's going to forget me after this, or think, if I balance this with a good thing, then I'll be good with God again. But in Romans chapter 3, Paul writes, no one is righteous. Not even one. In other words, no one can measure up to God. No one can earn their relationship with God because we're not right with him. We need to stop looking at ourselves. And if you think about the greatest philosopher of our age, she lives in a castle. She's the queen of Arendelle. She's Elsa. And she says, let it go. Let it go. It's funny how some distance makes everything seem small. And the fears that once controlled me can't get to me at all. It's time to see what I can do to test the limits and break through. No right, no wrong, no rules for me. I'm free. You see what Elsa's saying? She's saying it's all about you. It's all about finding you and finding the strength within you. Saying you can achieve this if you set your mind to it. Some people dream dreams. Others wake up and they achieve it for themselves. And even our children, they're so often told, if you can look to yourself, you can achieve anything. But friends, when it comes to righteousness, we need to tell people not to look to themselves. It's time to stop pretending that we don't have a problem. Those around us need to hear this. Those around us need to be told that they can't be right with God and that there is such a better way. We need to stop looking to ourselves and we need to look to God. Have a look at verses 6 and 7. They're a bit strange. Verse 6, But the righteousness that is by faith says, Do not say in your heart who will ascend into heaven. Verse 7, Or who will descend into the deep. And so Paul here, he takes us back to Moses and the law again. And if you look at the bottom of your Bible, it shows that Paul is referencing the Old Testament book of Deuteronomy. And in this part of Deuteronomy, Moses is teaching the law to the Israelites. He's telling them that the words of God, the law, are not beyond their reach. That's why Paul quotes Moses. Because you don't have to go to heaven or to death to hear the word. You don't have to go on a pilgrimage or to a special place on this earth to hear how to be right with God. Instead, have a look at verse 8. Verse 8, but what does it say? The word is near you. It is in your mouth and in your heart. That is the message concerning faith that we proclaim. You see, friends, God has brought the saving word near. It came to the Romans through people speaking and telling them. And in the same way, it comes to us. Think of all those people in your life who have spoken the word to you. A friend who spoke it, someone in a small group, someone in a big group. The word was spoken to each one of us. And God enabled those in Christ to receive this word by faith. And what does that faith look like? Well, let's have a look at verse 9. And let's see how verse 9 contrasts with verses 6 and 7. Verse 9 there, Paul writes, If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Notice those two aspects of faith. Jesus is Lord. He's Lord because he ascended into heaven. 
And then the second aspect, Jesus has descended to the dead. He died on that cross. And so we don't have to descend or ascend. Jesus has done that for us. He is the Lord of every square centimeter of this entire universe. Lord over sin, Satan and death. And he died so that we don't have to face eternal life. Our sin was placed on him on that cross. And he rose again to seal the deal. You see, Jesus has done all the heavy lifting for us to be saved. And so we look to God for righteousness because God gives us the gift of Jesus' righteousness. And we respond by faith, declaring with our mouths and believing in our hearts. And if you're new here with us at St. Luke's, we're so glad that you could join us online. And we, we really want you to share in the eternal life that we have because of Jesus. And if you haven't been able to be with us for a while here at church, this is a chance to start fresh again. Today is the day to have faith, to declare with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart. And did you see the guarantee from God's word? You will be saved. Have a look at verses 10 and 11. Verse 10, for it is with your heart you believe and are justified. It is with your mouth that you profess faith and are saved. Notice the confidence across these verses. You will be saved. It's absolutely guaranteed because God is the one who guarantees it. You see, not only does Jesus die to pay for our sin, not only are we justified, not only are we saved, but God goes the whole way for his people. Remember that righteousness? Well, in Christ, you are seen by God as righteous. Have you ever stopped to think about that? God, the creator of the entire universe, he sees you as righteous in Christ. And that's got to be the best news anyone can ever hear. So look to God for righteousness and now look out to the world. Look to the world. Have a look at verses 14 and 15. How then can they call on the one they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? And how can anyone preach unless they are sent? Friends, the world needs to hear about the saving message of Jesus. And God uses his people to bring it. This is an encouragement for all Christians. Remember, this word is near. It's on our lips and in our hearts. And it's through us that the world hears. Often I look at myself and I think, God could have chosen someone so much better with words. God could have chosen someone with the ability to answer tough questions. Or someone who's popular, a celebrity who has a voice and respect in the public. But friends, God has chosen us here at St. Luke's to take this message of Jesus, to tell others, to tell the world. We're sent out by Jesus and we're sent out to, by, by each other. Sent to our neighbours, our mother's group, our schools, our workplaces, uni, families, the list goes on. St. Luke's, we are God's plan A to take the news of Jesus to others. Recently, a church, at the church I go to, they made the decision to move the 8 a.m. service to another location, to the Anglican retirement village, to reach those moving in there with the message of Jesus. And one of the dear sisters in her 70s said with so much excitement, guys, we're being sent there as missionaries. Isn't that someone who's got this part of God's word? Because we're all missionaries. We're all sent out by Jesus to tell others the good news so that people can hear about the righteousness in Christ, so that people can receive and accept that invitation by faith. And it's not easy. It's a challenge. I started praying impossible prayers last year. That is a list of three people who I thought would never become Christians or even show an interest. Well, 12 months of praying, and then one of the guys from the bike shop that I work at said yes, yes to coming to church at Christmas. And there he is, he rocked up on his Harley Davidson motorbike, helmet in hand, tattoos up his arm. He walked into church and he sat in the back row and he heard the good news of Jesus. And who knows what God will do with this? It seemed absolutely impossible. So what did I do? I prayed. And friends, who are three people that you can put on your impossible prayer list? And when it comes to sharing the news of Jesus, with social distancing, it seems even more impossible. 
But let's start praying for them today. Sharing the good of, and sharing the good news of Jesus in this current time of isolation is going to look different. But we still have contact with people. It's just a bit different, but so important. We have a real opportunity, a real opportunity because people are feeling more socially isolated than ever. At this time, people are asking questions. They're uncertain. They're aware of danger and the Bible has answers. The good news of Jesus is what people need most. We need to bring the saving message of Jesus to people who need it so badly. And these recent events, they remind us of how fragile and short life can be. And so I'd love to hear ideas that you have about how we can share this news of Jesus. Let's share them together as a church on our Facebook page. And let me tell you some ideas that I've heard from different people. I've heard of people setting up a Facebook group or similar with people in their street or their neighbourhood as a way to touch base with people and to care for them. What about leaving a care package for your neighbours with a Bible verse on it? And for those that you know that have kids at home, you can leave a gift and activities and Bible activities or links to online kids' resources or videos. Or maybe you can even just say to people at the server or the shops, how can I pray to us? The person next door, the person in the supermarket, ask how they're going, how can I pray for you? I saw one guy post a video of his testimony on Facebook. I've seen so many people link their church online to social media and invite people to join them. I've heard of a gamer who chats with people while gaming about Jesus. It might even just be a phone conversation with a family member. There's so many different ideas and so many opportunities. What are yours? Keep praying for ideas and keep praying for opportunity. Keep sharing them on the church's Facebook page. But remember there'll be times where people say no, where people would be rude or even abusive. But let's have a look at the ver- last part of verse 15 from God's word. Verse 15, as it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. Friends, as you share the gospel, you are doing such a good thing. You are doing a beautiful thing. And we're sent into this world knowing that God works, knowing that his kingdom is bigger than we could ever think or ever imagine. Remember Jesus tells the parable of the mustard seed, the tiny, tiny mustard seed that grows to be the tallest tree in the garden. And so it is with the kingdom of God. It's so easy to think that Christianity is a lost cause in our workplaces, in our families or our schools or our country. But God is working and he is making his kingdom great despite this virus. Think of that vision in Revelation chapter 7. People from all places on earth gathered around the throne of God. A kingdom greater than we could ever think or imagine. God is working now in this world towards that great final kingdom. And so we remind and we tell people not to look to themselves but to look to God to be right with him because he has made a way. And so St. Luke's, let's look to share this with our world. Let's pray those impossible prayers and let's think about how this really strange and unique time can be used to bring the message of Jesus to those around you. And remember that God works so powerfully. I remember in my younger days of bushwalking and I found a flowing stream of water And then I found tiny little pebbles and I placed them trying to block the flow of the water. But no matter what I did, the water always seemed to find a way around. Or under the gaps of the pebbles, over the pebbles, around the pebbles, the water always kept on flowing. And friends, so it is with the message of Jesus. No matter what's happening in our world, God is working. He is sending the good news of Jesus out. And friends, he is using us here at St. Luke's Liverpool to do that. Let's pray now for God's help. Dear God, thank you so much that you are such a good God, that you have made a way for us to be saved, a way to be right with you through your son, Jesus. And we pray that you might use us to share this incredibly good news with those around us, people that so badly need to hear the saving message of Jesus. Amen. I hope you've enjoyed our time together and that you've found some comfort in God's determination to save us and the challenge to include us in this task of bringing the good news to those within our reach. 
After this online service is finished, I'll be hosting a QA and a at 10.30 if you'd like to join that. We'll be using Zoom to do this. That's an online platform where we can chat together. You'll find a link down in the comments on Facebook or in the description on YouTube. We'll also include a link to the YouTube lyric video of Let Your Kingdom Come. This song gives voice to our commitment to see the lost saved by Christ. Please enjoy. <laughs> 